thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here because uh, I have a strange idea. The strange idea is that in uh, 25 minutes you will be able to create your own personal assistant and five minutes later you can test it. And you can do uh, things like you know how uh, to do it with Siri and you will be able to do this yourself. So let's start with this man, Douglas Engelbart. Douglas Engelbart is known for, the, for being the inventor of the computer mouse, but his idea was to have an augmented uh, human uh, intellect. So he was thinking about how can we do, how can we create a smart interface between a machine and a human. And it came out that a mouse is appropriate to do this. But the important idea he invented is that it's important to have augmenting human intellect. So uh, that's the main thing what personal assistants are all about. It's about augmenting the human intelligence. And we can think what is uh, possible as well. For example, performing tasks and offer services. That's what we know is also available in the personal assistant. And do many more things that are beyond the ordinary power and reach of humans. So, all the time when people had been thinking about a personal assistant in the past, they thought uh, the right communication interface with a machine is to talk to them. Like in this very old Star Trek movie where Scotty thought he can talk to a computer in uh, the 90s uh, with a mouse. But uh, all the commercial systems, they also implemented this now. You can talk to Siri, Google Now, Cortana, and Alexa. That's the uh, thing where people have the impression that something intelligent, that uh, they are uh, talking to a computer which is intelligent, even if the answers are scripted and very simple. So they are called artificial intelligence uh, system. And I thought, if we all want to learn how a personal assistant works, then we should learn how artificial intelligence works. So let's have a look. There are many definitions, and in this morning we already heard what the definitions of artificial intelligence are. And here are some more. Uh, artificial intelligence is if a system can think like a human or act like a human, or if you don't compare it with a human, act rationally or think rationally. So what does that mean? Uh, we distinguish two different opinions, which are called strong AI and weak AI. The strong AI says that if we create a thinking machine, then it actually has a mind and it's actually thinking. And the weak AI thesis says, it's just acting like it has a mind and it's acting like it's thinking. It's not really, it, it doesn't really have a mind. So these persons here wrote a standard work for artificial intelligence, Russell and Norvik, and they say usually it works like this. We don't think about a strong AI hypothesis and we do a weak AI. Weak AI consists of some uh, simple methods, some simple strategies, they are not that simple, they are sophisticated in some way, but it's not so difficult to explain which kind of uh, algorithms they are. For example, constraint search is not the same thing as web search. This is uh, more difficult if you have a, a galaxy of options. You have to steer around and find the right one. That's what you do with a heuristic. Uh, learning. We already heard a lot of uh, learning methods and what a learning method I is. Um, reasoning, this is working with knowledge and logic. Uh, deduction system is working with this. And game playing is a uh, method where we can uh, find the best solution in an uncertain field of uh, options. So most of the algorithms are in one of these groups. 
So this, these are the methods to create artificial intelligence. If we want to create a cognitive assistant, then we have some more things we should consider. For example, language processing. We must be able to handle a large amount of data. Uh, we should know what a reasoning chain is, and what a computer proof is, maybe what an expert system is, and we should be able to handle machine learning algorithms. But uh, if you want to do this, if you want to handle uh, a personal assistant yourself, then you should be able to work with open source software, and there are some components you should expect in an open source framework, and that is there isn't a server, an AI server, where you could, can put in things and get out things. They should, uh, it should provide a personalized agent, and maybe you have a mobile client and you have the same thing as uh, Siri, Cortana, and you can speak to your uh, artificial intelligence, and you should be able to create user-defined skills, and that's a very important thing. If everything else is provided already, then the only thing you have to do is create your own skills, and the important message here is creating your own skills should be really easy. It should be as easy as creating a wiki article, and that's the main idea. Creating AI should be as easy as writing a wiki article. And uh, I will show you how this works. Uh, we created, in the last uh, Google Summer of Code, uh, a Locklock, this Locklock project where we collected uh, tweets, messages from uh, Twitter. And out of this project came the idea that we need something to formulate a search requests in a different way. And what came out was the Zuzi project, and that's what I'm now talking about. I will explain what we did there. It's called scientific user support intelligence. What we want to do is do an aggregation of world knowledge, have some methods for problem solving integrated, uh, be user-centric so you can have accounts within the system, and machine learning for accumulated advantage. That's a technology where you can increase what you have all the time with each cycle of more information, you get better, and you, then you get better with acquisition of more knowledge. And um, so what we did was not, we didn't intend to create artificial intelligence. We didn't create, uh, we, we didn't want to create a personal assistant. And um, the only problem was uh, to aggregate different ser uh, search uh, sources. I created the Yassi search engine a long time ago. It's a peer-to-peer -peer web search engine, so it's a source of web search results. And the LockLock project was about uh, collecting uh, messages from social media. And the idea was to integrate both sources in some way in an, with an aggregation service. If you want to do this, uh, you need a common data structure, you must do a kind of normalization of the information and a post-ranking so it can bring different sources in some kind of order. And then you have something like a desktop search. But after a while, we found out that it would be interesting to ask specific questions to the search database. And what you usually do, uh, and Google is also providing in their search interface, are search modifiers. You can ask to find something in an URL or, the, or in a title. You say, in title. So we started to, to develop our search mo modifier language like uh, who tweeted most about FOSS Asia and so on. And uh, suddenly we had to handle natural language uh, in some way. So we created conversation rules and uh, it all uh, was then suddenly about creating an AI assistant and uh, going the same way as uh, Siri and Cortana is doing. So um, at this point, it was interesting to integrate more data sources, not only search engines, but maybe uh, so, uh, data from the Wikipedia. And um, if we had a look at the data structures from the search results here, and the search results we uh, created in the, uh, the search aggregations, and uh, they had been the same. 
And the same data structure is, uh, it would be nice to feed it back to it, uh, our own data source, like uh, what we retrieved so far, it's called reflection memory. And because the, strict, the structure is the same, we can feed it back again into our aggregation service. And these data structures was then uh, called uh, fault. So uh, we found out that with this construction, we can do everything uh, which, we, which we would expect from Siri and Cortana and Alexa and so on. All our conversation rules had been appropriate for this. So we uh, said, let's go for a personal assistant and uh, get rid of the web search interface. And we call this construction the Zuzi Mind. So we didn't create a chatbot. We didn't create a personal assistant. We created a search aggregation service. But what came out was a personal assistant-like software. A um, little more insight what happens if the user uh, starts a query. We select some skills. These are conversation rules which are appropriate. Very important is the ranking to apply specific skills first. There's always the catch-all skill at the end of the order where the system says, I don't know an answer. That's always one of the skills, but it's the last one which uh, should be considered. And then uh, we do some first order uh, logic type deduction here, and we consider the skills as uh, deduction rules. And uh, validation means we check if the output system is appropriate to show the, this kind of answer. Uh, what we need is a skill memory. What we need is a data memory. We can feed back uh, information which had been created during deduction into the data memory and also create some abstraction out of it. We implemented reflection so that uh, Susie is able to call itself in, uh, within an answer generation. Uh, we have external data sources, of course, because this is mainly a data aggregation service from the web. It's called a console service. And uh, we have a skill source which can be applied from outside just for testing. And testing new skills are called Zuzi Dreams. And maybe we can much more with this. Uh, we consider our conversation rules as a very weak system. It's not a natural language uh, processing like technology. But uh, with a plug-in technology, you can plug in any system you want to. And uh, finally, we want that Susi is able to write its own skills. So this is our Susi mind construction. And um, the question is, what are user-defined skills? Because we want that creation of a skill is as easy as creation a wiki article. So have we, uh, let's have a look how they look like. The most simple, the most simple skill is just a fixed query and a fixed answer. This happens if you ask uh, Siri a simple question like, uh, sing me a song or uh, tell me a joke, or all, the, all these fixed script uh, requests and answers have a simil similar way. There are just many of them. So this is the first, and it's the most easy, easiest uh, skill you can have, just two lines of text. And uh, skills are actually really simple like this. They are only text lines. There's no JSON, no XML, no other setup. You just write these lines. The second exa example is about a random answer. It says either potatoes, vegetables, or fish. It just picks a random answer for this question. And you can have different questions which causes that the same answer is created with this kind of line. Then, of course, you have patterns where you can put in anything, or you can read out the patterns in a variable and repeat it again. You can use that variable, uh, you can use many of these variables. You can feed that variable in, a, uh, in another variable to store it permanently, and you can use that uh, variable in a second line so Susie was able to learn some topic. You can uh, assign some uh, status variables which had not been shown in an answer, but then used at afterwards. You can use with decision points if variables are set and have different answers depending on it. And you 
can have, of course, uh, comparisons. Uh, you can define some kind of functions by just uh, having any query line, which a person wouldn't say, but then you use it with the backward function here, and then this is used as a reflection at this point. Susie is calling itself at this point and assigning the result of this color into a variable and using this if it's set, so it's then fixed. Uh, you can do many things with this uh, simple construction, and I think that it's, it's not natural language processing, it's not sophisticated, but it's sufficient to fulfill the most things. Uh, and you can plug in JavaScript and evaluate what you have in a query with JavaScript. You can calculate there. And this is the most important thing where we started. We need all the other very simple conversation rules, but what we need is to do a search aggregation. You can have an access to an external API. For example, here you get a JSON back from the Locklock search service. And within the JSON, there's somewhere the answer hidden. And you just say where the JSON path is. This is a, this is a naming of a JSON path. JSON path is a standard how to address uh, where information in the JSON is. And this is then used, uh, it, it's an array where text is a property and then you can get back the text. This is a, this is a request line where you can get a tweet where a specific word appears in the tweet and you get back the, the tweet line. So you might say, um, this, is, this is not so complex. In the future we will do some more uh, thinking with backtracking, so several answers can be considered. This is partly implemented and it will create something like a first order logic. We can also plug in prolog. You, uh, next thing is reflection, that skills are able to read other skills and say what's inside other skills. And finally, skills which create skills, so a self-learning self effect is possible here. Um, here, um, uh, usually the effect uh, that you think oh, that's, not, uh, that's a chatbot, that's not artificial intelligence, uh, comes into your mind. And that's a, a standard uh, effect, uh, it's called um, the AI effect. Every time you understand how something works and it's able to create something which a human is usually uh, able to do, and you understand the algorithm, it, you say, oh no, this, this is not artificial intelligence, um, it's just... Uh, a simple algorithm, but uh, that's usually what happens. So let's check what we already, what, what we implemented here, and let's have a look back at the standard methods which are used in artificial intelligence algorithm. Reasoning, we implemented SUSY thoughts, which are sets of facts. They, these are uh, structures which are required for backtracking, so you have different options where you can choose from. Uh, so these skills are deduction rules and they are implemented as such. And uh, empty thoughts are failed states which trigger backtracking. This is standard method in uh, first order logic. Uh, the ordering of skills is a constraint search method because um, you are ordering uh, in such a way that the best result is achieved. We have some learning methods in, within of Locklock because uh, there is a Bayesian filter which can do a sentiment analysis. And in the future we will use game playing uh, technology to create new skills automatically. So uh, for cognitive assistance, what do we have here? We have text to speech and speech to text in our Android client and pattern matching for natural language processing. Not a sophisticated me method, but one that's easy to implement and that you can use. Uh, we have led uh, 1.8 billion tweets, which we use to create uh, answers from our Locklock harvester. We have uh, thoughts and backtracking, uh, which create some kind of reasoning chains. And we have sentiment analyzers for, uh, categories, uh, for the categories of tweets. We have the server implemented, it's ready, it's running. Uh, you have accounts, you can download the uh, Android client, and we have user-defined skills and they are called Susie Dream in a test environment. I show you how easy it is to write a skill. Um, very easy. Uh, you go to dreamasksusie.com and there's an etherpad running. 
And if your pet is just an empty web page where you can put in any text and you can collaborate with other people. And then you write down some SUSE skills. Uh, you open your chat client, either the online test client or also the Android client. You just say dream SUSE test. And then everything which you enter here is active here. So that's something you can try out right now. And it's, it's really easy to test this kind of technology. Uh, people warn about artificial intelligence, like Marvin Minsky uh, says, we are lucky they might decide to keep us as pets. They are so strong. And Stephen Hawking says, it will be the end of the human race. Uh, Elon Musk uh, says, it's our biggest existential threat. Uh, he's the founder of PayPal, SpaceX, and Tesla. And he also founded OpenAI. OpenAI is the answer on this threat. He says, if we want to keep up with the technology that uh, artificial intel intelligence is uh, creating itself, then we must uh, create an augmented human intellect. And um, to do this, we must develop our search, uh, our, our artificial intelligence ourselves to be able that humanity can keep up. So this is the good point uh, for all of us to start testing this kind of technology. And I want to end with the wise words of a robot. So I hope uh, you find this interesting and you want to come to our work workshop. Uh, tomorrow is the workshop and uh, please have a look at AskSusie.com. Thank you. All, all right. Um, if you notice, there are actually mics in front on the left and the right side. Uh, we will have Q&A a little bit. Yeah. Is, if there are any questions, please come down to the mics on the left and the right. Uh, about Susi, and uh, are there any questions that you have? All right, while we wait for the questions, uh, why don't I have a question? Yes. What is, what is the potential future of the Susi project? Uh, the idea is that people start to create uh, their own skill set, and uh, with their own skill set, uh, we can increase the capabilities of Susi. So, um, it should, uh, the best future of it is that it, it grows like the Wikipedia project uh, started to grow because it's so easy to write an article. And for this purpose, we made the Susi skills so easy that everybody can start and contribute uh, Susi skills. And any other questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, yes. How do we make sure that? Yeah, okay. How do, you, how do you verify the statements that people enter in your system? Um, how do we verify the statements that are input into SUSI? You mean the questions or the skills? The, the correctness. Like the correctness of the skills. Yes. How do we know it's correct? Uh, if, you, if you create a SUSI dream, it's just active in the session. It's not active for all the users. It's only active for your own session where you entered SUSI dream. And if you think you have a really nice skill set, you can send us a pull request. And at this point, uh, someone cooks, uh, looks at the, the skills you created. So okay. you see if it's correct or is valid in some way. Okay. <laughs> all right, great. Any other questions? Any other questions out there? Ah, oh, yes, come up to uh, the, the mic there, yes. What, uh, how do you monetize the uh, SUSI project? How would you monetize? How do you make money from SUSI? Oh, this is not a point, uh, uh, it was not a point last year when we just created it during the Google Summer of Code project because it was necessary, it was necessary that we de develop some kind of query language. Uh, of course, we can think about this. I think uh, many companies have uh, the requirement of creating a chatbot. So, uh, at least some consulting is possible. All right. And any other questions? Hello. Oh, okay. Is this audible? All right. Good. I have a question about um, the potential of a bubble, since you can customize the answers 
to the person's login, is it possible to turn it off to see what other people are seeing when they ask a question? Uh, what other people are seeing, in, um, if, if you start a Zuzi Dream, then it actually turns off all the other rule system which had been there and is only used if your own rule system is not uh, able to answer the questions. So uh, within a dream, your skill set is always on top and creates it. So other things are invisible. Of course you must test it if, if, if you put them in context with other ones. And there the, uh, the complexity starts. It's an open problem. All right. All right, we have uh, time for one more question. One more question. Hello. Uh, can I have my own SUSI on my own infrastructure and train it myself? Or is it somehow global SUSI and everybody joins there, trains their uh, SUSI there? The, the SUSI server is, uh, has a free license. You can download and start it. And it's not difficult, you can use it with your chat client you create yourself or also the Android client. You can host it yourself. But here it's hosted on astuzi.com uh, to be uh, simple. Thank you. All right. Uh, with that, let's give uh, Michael a round of applause. Thank you so much for sharing.